What's up, you guys? It's Cody. Man, I just cannot stop buying this one particular stock that I love so much. This stock is Curiosity Stream. If you haven't heard about Curiosity Stream, it is a nonfiction streaming platform that I think has a lot of future potential. I think there's a very specific niche in this streaming uh, industry that's going to be able to allow this stock to explode as more and more people pick up on this and enroll in this awesome streaming service. It's an extremely cheap service. They've got a massive market outside of the United States and they're growing very quickly. And I believe that with the pandemic that we saw in 2020, they are going to continue to grow even quicker. This is a stock that I had bought heavily over just the last little bit. I mean, look at this. I did buy shares at the end of last year. I bought a couple of shares here in my Webull account. I bought 68 shares and then 10 shares the next day after that as the price dropped. I also picked up about $2,000 worth of shares in this account here and another roughly $2,200 worth of their warrants because I want a little bit of extra financial uh, leverage with this. I also have some warrants in this other account here, just a very small position in this account of $500. So this is a company that I continue to buy and I can't seem to get enough. I mean, look at this account here. Uh, you can see my purchase history. I bought this three times last week, just kind of slowly averaging in. I bought a very big position as it shot up because I thought, hey, I'm a little bit worried this might shoot up even further. Um, so I did buy on a very green day then, and that position is down now slightly, but I'm okay with that because I think this is gonna go even further. Uh, I did buy more uh, warrants today of this company. And so I'm not worried about that, but you can see here again, I bought shares on the, these dates as well. So this is a company that I'm extremely bullish on. Like I said earlier, they are a streaming service that makes uh, content specifically in the nonfiction space. This is documentaries and they have documentaries about everything. I mean, documentaries about space, about the deserts, about oceans, about animals, about humans, about psychology, about drugs. I mean, like everything, like anything you can think of that's nonfiction documentary related, they have it here on this platform. They've got over 3000 titles right now and they are expecting to grow that to over 11,000 titles uh, over the next coming years. They've got an absolutely huge market share that they can tap into as well. Right now, they've got roughly 13 million subscribers. And just for comparison, Netflix has over 180 million subscribers as of the last data that I was able to find. That's a number that I pulled as of April 2020. So it very well could be higher than that due to the state of the world over the last little bit. That being said, I do think that Curiosity Stream has an immense amount of potential to grow even further. Of those 13 million subscribers, roughly half of those are outside of the United States. I think this is a big plus for them. I don't know what the numbers are for Netflix on that, but I think this is massive for them because even though the United States is probably the number one market in the world, you know, economically, or just kind of, you know, the United States kind of sets the precedent, especially for the stock market as to like how these companies are going to do and where most of the buyers are for the companies that are based here in the United States, right? But I think that the fact that Curiosity Stream has paying subscribers, roughly 50% in other countries, gives it a massive leg up. This is gonna give them the opportunity to grow beyond just the United States. If you look at the actual population where we're at now, we've got 300 million people, roughly 330, I think, uh, maybe is the last count for the population in the United States. But look at the world population. The world population is over 7 billion. So there's a much bigger broad market out there in the world if they can get into Canada, into Mexico, into Australia, into Europe, into all of these different countries, Asia. I mean, look at this, guys. There's a massive potential out there for this type of content. And I would say, I would probably argue that uh, it, people outside of the United States are probably more interested in this, you know, in documentary type stuff and probably would rather spend their time in this type of content as opposed to more of the fiction type stuff that we seem to enjoy here in the United States. You know, it just seems to go with the culture. People here in the United States, they like to kind of zone out and just get into a show and just kind of binge watch it, right? Whereas I do see that culture, other cultures are more interested in actual education and actual learning. So if they're going to spend time watching these shows or they're going to have their kids watch these shows or whatever, I think that they're actually going to uh, kind of lean towards this type of content. And I think that will actually get people to subscribe to this service as opposed to other services, or at least stay subscribed to this one, right? There's no reason they can't have both or have many, many different services. I've got pretty much all the streaming services out there. I've got Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, I mean, a bunch of stuff off of Amazon video. So there's a huge market for this. And I think they're going to continue to explode their revenue. Revenues in 2020 are estimated to be about 39, 40 million dollars and they're expected to do almost double this in 2021 up to 72 million dollars one thing that i found that was really interesting about this is that their cost of service for the streaming platform is actually very cheap compared to other streaming services they do this because it's cheaper to actually make the content that they're putting out onto the service so they don't have to charge as much to be able to make it um, you know make sense for them they are not a profitable company yet they're spending a lot on advertising they're spending a lot on growing trying to build this into a bigger system but they are able to charge a 
a, a much smaller amount. I mean, I signed up for $12 for a yearly subscription. That's just, you know, that's like almost like robbery, right? If they had charged me $19, you know, if they charged me like $19.99, which is their regular price when it's not on a holiday sale or whatever, or even $29.99 or even $39.99 for a yearly subscription, this is probably still something that I would have signed up for even if I hadn't bought their stock, right? I just enjoy this type of content. If I'm going to be spending my time watching uh, TV, you know, I generally do like it to be a little bit more educational. Now, don't get me wrong. I do love my shows. I do love to kind of just get into these fiction shows or just, you know, watch different TV shows. But every once in a while, it's nice to kind of watch something that's a little bit nonfiction uh, with my kid. You know, I'd kind of prefer he watches something like that rather than just cartoons all the time. I'm, you know, but whatever, that's another story. I think there's a big potential for uh, this to continue to grow as people kind of make the shift towards streaming in general, but also streaming different types of content, right? There's a large sector of the market that I think would be interested in this type of service. And the fact that they're only charging, you know, $12 when it's on sale or $20 when it's not on sale, that's actually a really good price. I mean, that's a couple dollars a month, uh, for anywhere from like one to less than $2 per month for this service, which is just extremely cheap. So I think that honestly, you know, they should be charging more. That's not my decision. They probably know the inner workings of what they're doing a little bit better than I do. But I think, you know, I wouldn't even bat an eye if I was paying $24.99 or $29.99 or whatever for a yearly subscription. That's still extremely cheap for amazing content like this. I mean, well worth it for what you're getting. All right. I want to talk a little bit about where their stock is at because we have seen some recent increases and I do think that it's going to kind of trade flat until it gets picked up by Wall Street. So if we pull up this information here, you can see that CuriosityStream is still a relatively small company. They're sitting at a $674 million market cap. This is still really small compared to other companies out there. I mean, let's take a look at Netflix um, stock. Right now, Netflix is trading at just under $500, but it's a $220 billion company. This is absolutely insane how big of a company Netflix is. Obviously, they've got the, the numbers to back it up. But the thing I want to look at with CuriosityStream here on Webull, which by the way, if you haven't gotten your free stocks, use the link in the description below. You're going to get four free stocks valued up to $21 after you open an account and deposit a hundred bucks. So it's automatic 21% return. The thing I want to look at here, Curiosity Stream, you know, in the $670 million market cap range, I mean, this is this is a stock that's trading at roughly $16. And for the day here, I mean, last week it traded mostly flat, kind of up, down, up, down a little bit, but we did have a big spike here at the end of the year, 1231. That was not because of my video, uh, other other uh, reasons why, but we did also see a uh, jump back here on December 18th from about 1050 all the way up to $13 or so before jumping again. So I would not be surprised to see this company explode even more as Wall Street picks it up and actually starts putting money into this. I think it's going to see a big run up. I think this could easily be, you know, a one to a $2 billion company uh, right now, given the state of the market and how hyped the market is this very well could be a one to $2 billion company based on what they're going to do over the next little bit. They're expecting, like I said, revenues to double over the next year or almost double. I think they're going to continue to grow this company and see some massive gains along with that. I don't know, guys, this is just my own opinion. I'm not a financial advisor, so invest at your own risk. But that being said, I mean, I still see a lot of upside for this company and I'm trying to build out my position right now before it does explode and become a bigger, uh, well-known company. This is a company I had never even heard of until I just happened to stumble across it. And I don't think that a lot of other people have actually heard about this service, but once they do, I think once they can get their name out there, I wouldn't be surprised to see more and more people signing up because it's at such a low price point. It doesn't, you know, it almost makes sense. Like you can't justify just not signing up for it. I mean, if you're interested in streaming and you're interested in kind of what this product is, I mean, it's 12 bucks, right? That's like lunch. So, uh, I mean, sign up for it. I think people will. And I think that as they continue to to grow and expand, they're going to see a lot of opportunity uh, out there in the future. And the other thing I've got to mention about this is John Hendricks, who's the founder of CuriosityStream, is also the founder of the Discovery Channel and all the channels that are related with that. So he obviously knows what he's doing when it comes to just traditional cable TV. He knows what he's doing. He built the Discovery Channel into a massive network. Now, whether you agree with the content they put out, that's another story. But I mean, he built Discovery Channel. He knows exactly what he's doing and he knows how to grow a company. So he's made the transition to uh, this online digital streaming service with curiosity stream and i think that perfectly aligns with the network that he already has from discovery channel i think it allows him to be uh, very bullish and grow this company in, you know in a slow steady way to become one of the biggest streaming services out there in this specific niche i'm not saying it's going to be on the biggest level uh, such as netflix it's not going to grow bigger than that it's you know even if it's a a tenth of netflix it would still be a massive company at 20 billion dollars with a lot of room to grow in their share price but the fact that john hendrix knows what he's doing and has built you know built discovery from 
where it was uh, to where it is now is amazing. And the fact that he's doing that with this company as well, I think is a big upside. He also was purchasing shares of the company back in early December based off of some SEC filings that I looked at. And, um, you know, that kind of is a good sign. If he's buying back shares, it obviously means that he believes in this company and where it's going to go. He's obviously not going to be selling those anytime soon. At least I don't think so. If he's buying those shares, you know, there's a good chance he's going to be holding on to them, which is going to kind of take them out of circulation, which is only going to limit the amount of shares that can trade, therefore increasing and pushing the price up even a little bit further. Like I said, guys, there are some risks with this company. They are not yet profitable. They're not expecting to be profitable for at least another couple of years. And, you know, honestly, who knows where that will go? I think it's going to be a little bit of time before we actually see what the trajectory of this company is. It's going to depend on their 2020 numbers when they release those. It's also going to depend on how 2021 goes and what type of growth they can see here into the future. So I've got a really big outlook on this company. I'm super excited about it. I just want to share it with you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up here on the video if you enjoyed this content. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. I'd love to see you along here on the journey for additional future videos. And with all that being said, guys, I'll catch you in the next one.